it can be quite daunting putting yourself online for everyone to see and for everyone to judge you and trust me they do but that's the name of the game social media can be a vicious vicious place especially creating content and posting it and putting it out and reading through the comments later on it's it's not the best time you know it's not for the faint hearted but people will comment on anything right they'll comment about oh my god my hair's fucking mess that they'll comment on that they'll comment on the wall behind you they'll comment on your neck your clothes you're wearing even if it's nothing to do with a video and of course your face they're gonna comment on your face especially if you're doing beauty or something image related or especially when you ask them to which it baffles me why anyone would want to do this but there's been a trend recently going around of people creating content that is asking people how old do you think I look? I'm not asking you that, by the way. And the results, I'm sure you can imagine. Duh. There's a reason I wanna talk about this today, because there's something that is a particular pet peeve of mine within makeup and beauty that I wanna to touch on. I also want to mention very quickly before we get into this video today, I did have a membership option here on YouTube that has now moved over to Instagram because I can interact with you a little bit more. So I have a subscription service on Instagram where you're in my inbox and we talk about makeup and one-on-one, -on -one, I've been, it's actually been really fun. People have been sending me their pictures. I've been drawing on their pictures, patches of places to do things where you should put your blush. We've been talking about people's skin undertone, their problems with their makeup. And then we have um, members only live streams on Instagram also. So go ahead and check out my profile and there should be a subscribe button on the profile. Uh, yeah. I just want to thank everyone who watches these style videos as kind of commentary content. I love making them. I love that people watch them and it shows in my analytics that people enjoy it more than my other content, which is fine. My channel became what it is today through reaction content, right? My reaction videos are the best performing videos on my channel. And I always have been. And they always will be. But that's how I was able to do this as a full-time job is people loved my reaction content right from the start. These videos I do, whether it be the history of um, a brand, touching on how lighting can change your makeup or manipulate your makeup, or talking about the owners of beauty brands, they always have something educational in them. Makeup to me, is more than just trying on a product and being like, yeah, I like it or I don't, or, oh, it's so fun. You know what I mean? I like understanding lighting. I like understanding why formulas exist. I like understanding who is behind the brand that I'm buying or that people are so interested in so I can make an educated and informed decision. So although I still do makeup reviews, not many people watch them. I think they miss them because they always ask me to do them and they're right there. I post three times a week. All you have to do is click my videos on my channel and you'll see them. These kind of videos I make now are my favorite to do. I, I really enjoy making them because they contain information that is more than just a review of a product. As I said, makeup to me is more than just reviewing products and saying whether or not I like them or just doing tutorial. And I think as people's love for makeup grows and progresses, as it has done, there still needs to be a level of education in there that are, isn't just basic tutorials, you know? And that's why I like also using like TikTok trends or trends that are happening online to talk about makeup because they're actually really good to look at and be like, you know what? Like my reaction videos, we look at something and we're like, you know what? That's not quite true or that's not quite how it is. And that's why today I wanted to use um, content from online that is about mature skin. As I mentioned, mature skin is, is a pet peeve of mine, right? The, the term mature skin. Yes, it's a category of skin within the makeup world, but am I really low down? Yeah, I thought I was. I think there's a few common misconceptions about it though, like what mature skin is and who has it. I think it seems like from my experience, people turn a certain age and they're like, well, I'm, I have mature skin now, you know, one day they turn 50, for example, and they're like, well, my skin's mature. And that's not the case, right? Like most skin types, they tend to be kind of made up for the beauty industry. Oily skin, dry skin, combination skin, mature skin. We all know though that more skin types exist than that, right? Mine is oily and dehydrated. And it's, but I wouldn't say it's a combination in the makeup world. You, you keep hearing a creaking. It's my chair, it just, it's just, I think it's getting a bit old. And seeing as mature skin is more about surface texture, elasticity, things like that, 
it should still be kind of mixed, right? Like mature oily, mature dry. Mature skin can be oily despite what people say. But to be fair, makeup can be categorized that simply, unlike skincare, where it's a little bit more in depth, it's a little bit more about ingredients that actually change your skin. So bear in mind, we're not talking about skincare in this video. We're talking about makeup and how um, mature skin affects makeup and how makeup affects mature skin, mature skin. So mature skin is pretty much usually seen as a face that has deep set wrinkles, um, age spots, perhaps it's losing its elasticity. Not necessarily fine lines, we're talking like actual wrinkles here, we'll touch on that later too. There is some hyperpigmentation, dullness is another way people describe it, lack of a glow, which I think is, is kind of harsh. And although mature skin is typically found on a particular age, it doesn't mean that just because you are 50, you have mature skin. Let's talk about this. You can absolutely be in your early 30s, I'm sorry to say, and have mature skin. You could even be in your 20s. Trust me, I have I have seen it. There are people I know in my life who are 50 plus, and they have skin that if I was to do their makeup, wouldn't be treated as mature skin. It's tight, there's a few very, very fine lines, not wrinkles, fine lines. If it, it has a beautiful glow to it, it's not mature skin. And we do also have to acknowledge, and it's a proven fact, that particular races also age slower. So you, again, you may be 50, but it doesn't mean you have mature skin. I have literally had to ask, well, I didn't have to, but you know, we were laughing and joking about their age and somebody would tell me they were a certain age and I was like, no, you're not. There's no, there's no way. I would have to ask for ID because they said they were older than I thought they were. But I mean by like 10, 20 years, it's been, yeah. I, and I really thought they were lying, but their driver's license says like, yeah, no, that's the year they were born. One thing I always find really awkward as a makeup artist is when people ask, how old do you think I am? Don't ask people that. And I always kind of like subtract 10 years. <laughs> from what I really think they are. But the real answers of this is something I don't think people are ready to hear. As I mentioned before, it's become a trend online recently for any, everyone of any age, we're talking like 20s up to 70s, asking people how old do they think they look. Now, I think this came from, stemmed from the fact that there's been this kind of like argument on social media, which I wish, I wish millennials and Gen Z and US and UK would stop fucking fighting on social media. <laughs> it's so annoying. It stems from this opinion that Gen Z look older for their age and millennials look younger for their age. Not saying that millennials look younger than Gen Z, but saying that for their ages, millennials look younger and for the age that Gen Z are, they are appearing to look older. Now that's not a fact. I just think that's where the trend came from because then people be like, okay, well, am I a millennial or am I a Gen Z? Tell me, or I'm a millennial, how old do you think I look? Like that kind of thing, they were trying to prove a point. Uh, I wanna take a look at a few people that have done this and discuss the skin. And um, they have quite literally asked, how old do you think I look? So that's what we are gonna do. I'm not gonna be like, oh, you look like something. We're gonna talk about their skin texture in terms of makeup. I want to say this also. I don't wanna see anyone in the comments of this video shaming anyone for not aging how you see fit, right? What I mean by that, congratulations if you're happy to grow old gracefully. You don't wanna dye your hair, you don't wanna get Botox, you don't wanna get fillers, you don't want facelifts, you don't want whatever, good for you. That's great, that's lovely. However, some people like filler, they like to color their hair, they like their Botox, they like lip injections. If this is how they want to age, then so be it. If this is what they want to do, so be it. It's not your version of aging gracefully, but it's their version of how they want to age. And yes, growing old is a privilege. It's it's such a gift, you know, really, yeah. But you know, sometimes we exchange gifts for something else. It happens. <laughs> this video isn't about not wanting to age also, or not wanting to look old. It's about the stereotypes of how people think certain age groups should look at that age. And I also have to add, describing someone's skin as mature is not an insult. Somebody recently told me that they thought I was 36 years old and I'm not. Just to be clear, I'm not even, not close, close-ish. I'm not 36. Do I look 36? I mean, I definitely have great hair, but like, like if I take my glasses off, you like really look at my face. Do I look 36 years old? I guess I could. I don't know. I've seen 36 year olds that look younger than me, but I don't feel like I even dress like a 36 year old. I don't feel like I give off 36 year old vibes. In my mind and body, I still feel like I'm 16. So, I mean, sometimes I hurt like I'm 36 years old. Like sometimes my knees 
hurt. You know, like, I'm 36. But, like, I still feel like a teenager for the most part. Like, I'm a teen mom with three boys and have been married for a while. Anyway, how old do I look? That's what I want to know. Do I look 36? Because if you say I look 36, I'll be like, okay, that person wasn't crazy. But since this person said it to me, I haven't stopped thinking about it. And no one, none of my family thinks that I look 36 because, of course, I've asked everybody because I've been like, do I look 36? Anyway, let me know. I want to say as well, remember that this individual just said, I've seen 36 year olds that look younger than me. So she isn't saying 36 year olds look super old. She's saying there are 36 year olds that look younger, but majority of the time, a 36 year old is meant to look older than this individual. Now, I don't know what it is about the 30s era for Gen Z, but they think that as soon as you turn 30, you're, you age instantly. Like you're the grandma from Coco, right? You're 30, you're done. And this is what I mean again by stereotypes of how per people of certain ages should look. There are people in their 30s that look fresh as like, like they've just been born. But then yes, there are also people who look super old in their 30s. Same with people in their 20s. Let's watch this one too. How old do you think I look? I have been obsessed with watching everyone's videos. So I thought I'd hop on the trend. I'm so intrigued because I get guesses from two different decades. Um, so yeah, how old do you think I look? I have taken my glasses off because I thought you could see my face more closely. I've literally just got out of the shower, done my skincare, so there's nothing on my face. So yeah, how old do you think I am? Very brave, very brave people. So the girl in the first video is 29. The girl in the second video is 34. However, they have both told me they were the same age. I, I would believe them. They, they do look very similar in age. So I chose these two in comparison because they both have um, a similar kind of skin. And in terms of makeup, I a very similar kind of... Um, I would do a similar kind of shape on their face with a blush, a similar kind of positioning. But one is mid 30s and one is late 20s. So for those people who think that, you know, 30s is extremely mature skin, it really isn't. So when this video goes up just now, I have just last week turned 35. And you can see between me and these two individuals, by the way, no men did this trend. No man did this trend. I was desperately trying to find it. They did the one with a filter that comes up. It's like, guess my age. And no guys did it. I Unless I missed them. But I typed in the trend guy. I scrolled for hours and could not find a man who did this trend. Um, so here's me for, for comparison. There's lots of diversity in skin texture, the way things move, eye shapes and things like that. And although people in the comments of these videos suggested they were a lot older than they were, not because they actually look a lot older than they are, but because there are just people wanting to be mean in the comments. There is nothing that suggests mature skin on these faces. Even if there's some fine lines, they're not permanent fine lines. They only appear with movement and that doesn't suggest mature skin. Alongside this trend, TikTok seems to be fascinated with how old people look. There was another trend where people hold their phone like super close to their face and they kind of have natural light and they're like, this is the natural untouched face of a 32 year old. And you know, they, they show their wrinkles, they show their fine lines, they smile, they show their lips and things like that. Which again is a very dangerous trend. <laughs> because a lot of the time it's like, this is the skin of a normal 32 year old. And by normal, I think they mean someone who hasn't had Botox, who hasn't had filler, who doesn't get skin treatments all the time. Perhaps they aren't like an influencer with expensive skincare. But by saying that their skin is normal, they get a lot of backlash, which is kind of like expected. You can't call your skin normal. But let's take a look at this trend, right? And I want to say something about it too. So this one says 36 year old. So this one says 36 year old untouched face. Always forget to wash my face before bed. Sunseeker, occasional party at mum of two daughters. So in the trend, you can see hair back. We can see texture. We can see fine lines around the eyes, lips, freckles. Um, what else is there? That's it, really. Skin. In case anyone needs a reminder, what bare skin off a 37-year-old woman looks like without filters, filler, filters, yeah, or work done. Sunspots, soft lines, discoloration, wrinkles, laugh lines, 
real and normal. It's also normal to get Botox if you want Botox. Let's stop shaming people for wanting to care for their face in the way they want. Not saying that this individual is, but if you're online, people aren't gonna call you normal if you've had filler or Botox. Two completely different skin types and faces. One, just one year older than the other. But the first one is an example of what I would consider mature skin. There's some deep set lines when the skin is rested. Um, so meaning that you don't have to pull any expressions for them to be showing. And some sun damage. She has in an incredible skin tone. Her skin looks great. It's wonderfully smooth. In terms of makeup, it wouldn't be a case of trying to hide or cover up these things for me. You know what I mean? I'll just change up some of the textures that I would use on the skin, perhaps in the areas where the skin moves. This video idea is great though, because it's very rarely we see unfiltered, high quality visuals of skin on um, online. Of, of all ages, you know? So this is great to see that the variation in different people at a similar age in their 30s, in their 20s. I get fine lines a lot on my face. Um, my forehead, around my eyes. Well, I actually get Botox, so I don't have them on my head that often, but sometimes I go some time without it, and it's very noticeable. Now, I've watched a lot of these videos, a lot of these, trying to find like good ones to show. And what I think, I think it's really important to realize when your face is just dehydrated versus what um, wrinkles are, right? Or what a fine line is. When you're super dehydrated, hydrated and you don't even realize it, the difference it makes to your face, to your skin is crazy. Can I also mention, we're not even in the age range of what is considered mature skin in cosmetics. You see what I mean? You can have mature skin at any age. Again, things like hooded eyes aren't mature. Everyone has hooded eyes. I technically have a hooded eye. I sit with my brows like this often when I'm filming, but my brown actually sits like this. You can't see my eyelids, so my eyes are kind of naturally hooded, but I do have a habit of doing this um, with my eyebrows. So there are things that people consider mature that just really aren't, they're just regs. I think the point I really want to get across in this video in particular, observe your skin and be real with yourself, right? And I don't mean like, look at the, your skin and be like, oh, that looks shit. I mean, look at your skin and be like, is it really that bad? Am I, do I really have mature skin? Am I just dehydrated? Have I not done a good skincare routine for five days? Look in the mirror and do you really need to think, oh, I'm 60, I have extremely mature skin, or I'm 45 now and I'm mature. Like, are you being real with yourself? You know what I mean? Or, are, or is it just different? to what you're used to knowing your own face, you know? Or perhaps you're in your late 30s and you know what? Maybe you're thinking I could perhaps adopt some mature skin techniques. The industry description of skin types, mature skin, I think is extremely old fashioned. Just like when people are like, don't wear glitter in your 50s. Don't wear something on your eyelid. I think it's extremely old fashioned. We have so many new formulas, techniques, way to do things. And the way even we perceive makeup as consumers and as um, a whole is different to how it was five years ago, 10 years ago. The makeup people do now would be considered crazy. What, like 10 years ago? Now you, you wouldn't bat an eyelid. You wouldn't bat an eyelid if somebody was walking down the street with green lipstick wears however many years ago. It was, it was a bit crazy. There are some reasons, some rules that exist, like using certain textures and certain texture skin, but aren't we over the, you know, hating the texture of people's skin? There's makeup artists out there, like Painted by Spencer, for example, who does incredible makeup on what's considered mature skin, using techniques that are very similar to people who are in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 20s. So I think before you go around, you know, saying, oh, I need to change this because I'm this age now, consider like not thinking that and ignoring it. There are certain things that you can enhance in terms of your makeup routine to suit your skin better, but the old rules, this mature skin situation is ageless in my eyes. There is no age to it. So to say that somebody in their 50s shouldn't be wearing bright blue eyeshadow, but yet maybe they have the same facial structure and, you know, the same amount of fine lines as somebody in their late 20s. Are we really doing that? Are we really still doing that? Okay. I would love to know your opinion down below. Thank you so much for watching this. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.